The d'Alembert method is among the most famous and frequently used to win at roulette, as it poses significantly lower risks compared to other roulette strategies out there. One of the most popular variations is the reverse d'Alembert strategy, which, with a slight tweak, changes the entire game dynamics. However, this variation has a problem. What is it? Well, we'll see it in this video. Welcome to Ninja Gamblers, the ultimate destination for quality casino content. Here you can find the latest info as strategies for roulette, blackjack, poker, slots and more. If you want to stay ahead of the game and be best equipped to try and beat the casinos, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. In the link in the description of this video, you can also find a link to our Telegram channel where we share extra content that never makes it to YouTube. And you can also find a list of safe licensed casinos we recommend with free money bonuses that they offer. Right. In two previous videos, we've tackled both the classic and the modular d'Alembert strategies. We observed that the modular variation is notably more successful than the simple one, as it boosts the odds of winning, providing profit for the player if they start with a streak of wins, where the simple strategy would lead to losses. Today, we explore another significant variation, the reverse. Does this variation also offer benefits? Well, it's a bit of a mixed bag because it presents a substantial advantage but also a considerable risk. We'll delve into this in detail today, weighing the pros and cons. First off, I'm assuming you're familiar with the basics of the d'Alembert method, so if you haven't seen them yet, I've linked the video explaining the simple d'Alembert strategy in the top right corner, where I cover the main rules along with the video on the modular variation also here on the top right corner. Also, as usual, I remind you that the d'Alembert method only works on European and French roulettes, not on American ones with two zeros. And you need to play on online casinos with an unbiased algorithm that are certified in your country. So any from the list in the description will do. What is this list about? The online world is full of unlicensed online casinos that are fraught with risks potentially leading to legal and financial issues. These casinos may be unlawful, susceptible to fraud, and likely to have rigged games, resulting in financial losses. Often located in tax havens, these casinos can vanish without a trace, leaving no recourse to recover lost funds. So, which casinos are reliable? We have thoroughly researched and put together a list of verified, licensed, and fair casinos for each country worldwide. This list is accessible through the link in the video's description and the first pinned comment. The casinos we listed are secure and offer bonuses such as free cash or spins to new players. We personally ensure these casinos are free of rigged games and update the list daily as new verifications are completed. For our viewers in the United States, the legality of online casinos varies by state. Some states permit only social casinos. Using the link in the description, you can discover the best legal casinos for your state, or the leading social casinos if you reside in a state where traditional online casinos are not yet legal. Currently, I'm in Italy playing at an Italian casino, so the game graphics you'll see are in Italian. However, the gameplay experience will be the same if you play it in English. In particular, the roulette I'm playing, the Premium European, is available in the first casino we listed for US-based players, and the second casino we listed for people in the UK and the other countries in the world. Same goes with the betting calculations. They work exactly the same in dollars, euros, pounds, or anything else. All right, let's go. Okay then, as usual, I've started with a balance of 100 euros. Let's see where we get this time. First off, we'll use the modular variation as our base as it's established to have a higher chance of winning. However, today we're going to test the reverse version, also known as Contra d'Alembert. Let me explain how it works. We start with 10 euros, our base bet, remembering that we'll use 1 euro as the unit of increase or decrease, as we did with the modular variation. We lost, so we dropped to 9. Yes, indeed, as the name suggests, the reverse d'Alembert variation involves flipping the basic concept. Instead of increasing our bet by one unit every time we lose, and removing one unit every time we win, we'll do the opposite. We'll increase by one unit every time we win, and decrease by one unit every time we lose. So, now I bet 8 and 1, so I'll increase by one unit, that is, 1 euro, and bet 9 euros. One again. 
so I'll bet 10 euros, adding another euro, my base bet, to the bet. Lost, so we subtract 1 euro, thus betting 9 euros again. 1, so it goes back to 10 euros. 1 again, so 11 euros. So, in short, you see how it works. It's exactly the opposite of adding or subtracting a base unit compared to the simple or modular d'Alembert. If you lose, you subtract 1. If you win, you add 1. I do it with 1 euro as the unit and a starting bet of 10, but you can always adjust this with various modulations. $30 with a base unit of 3, 10 British pounds with a base unit of 2, whatever you prefer really. The concept remains the same nonetheless. So, what benefits and issues does this variation bring? Well, by reversing the way we play, it changes quite a bit more than you might realise. In short, the normal d'Alembert method, whether simple or modular, is based on the d'Alembert principle of equilibrium. In simple terms, using the variations explained in the other videos, you know that if you have an exact number of reds and blacks, or evens and odds if you play those, you turn a profit. That is, if 5 blacks followed by 5 reds come up, not only do we recover everything we've lost, but we also make a profit. The longer this oscillation, the more we zigzag up and down before returning to the starting bet, the more profit we make. However, this doesn't exactly happen in the reverse variation. Yes, because with the reverse d'Alembert, with an equal number of outcomes, like 5 reds and 5 blacks, we neither break even nor profit. Instead, we face a slight loss. Thus, using this variation, you always need slightly more reds than blacks in my case, or your chosen colour must come out more than the other. So, a small change in betting changes everything regarding the probability of winning. Then, there's another point. Personally, I don't like the fact that when you lose, not only have you lost the bet, but you also have to bet less. So if you win, you win less and you know you have to recover with future increases, hoping for a positive sequence. Well, from a psychological standpoint, it seems a bit burdensome and less fun to play this variation. And so, why do people use it? First, to mix things up. Alternating methods is always a good thing. And secondly, there's a psychological relief from the fact that you don't double down on losses, but rather optimise positive sequences. Capitalising on luck, let's say. Okay, meanwhile, I've reached 160 euros, which was my take profit target for today's session, so I'll stop here. So, as you've seen, this variation actually results in a bit more loss, capitalising on winning streaks on those lucky moments where it tries to recover from previous unlucky times. However, I honestly like this variation less. I don't know, it feels like quite a psychological blow to bet less when you lose and hope for the best in the future. Then there's a thing about having lower winning odds, and if you have an equal number of reds and blacks, you end up losing. To me, it seems like a bit of an unattractive variation. Another important thing is, to win and come out with more money than before, you need to know when to stop, right when you're doubling like crazy and winning big that's when you need to stop. Do you have the skill to do it or do you get carried away until you start losing again? Well, all things to consider. Personally, as you've gathered, I like this less than the normal modular d'Alembert. In my opinion, that's the best variation of the d'Alembert category by far, but everyone has their tastes. Are you interested in seeing a practical comparison of the two methods to see which wins more? If so, write in the comments do the comparison. Let's see if I'm right or if this method surprises me and wins more. So let me know what you think in the comments. I try to respond to everyone. I remind you that in the link in the description, you can find a list of safe and certified online casinos in your country and in each US state. I recommend using certified casinos if you want peace of mind to avoid scams, rigged games, or even playing in illegal casinos in your country and having trouble with the law. If you enjoyed this video, Please like it, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you soon, ninjas.